Hey what's up everyone and welcome to a new Integral Audio Upload. In this video, we will take a look at another plugin from Audio Damage. This plugin comes from a successful AD series called Replicant, and we will check out Replicant's latest update. This one is known for its ability to chop up and manipulate audio in various ways, offering features such as stutter, pitch shifting, and time stretching. This plugin is not really limited to a specific genre since its features can be applied across various musical genres and styles, including electronic music, ambient, experimental, glitch, and more. There is a creative and experimental nature about it that makes it a valuable tool for adding innovative and unconventional textures to sounds and songs and just generally in your sound design. So before we get into this one, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this and check out the link in the description if you want to read more about this plugin and other similar plugins on our website. Let's get started. That was a glitch loop with Replicant 3 and as you could tell from the engage and bypass loops, more groove and movement was introduced to the beat. And I let the loop play for a little longer because there was randomization as well. So not every time Replicant starts engaging would be the same. Unless you wanted to of course. Replicant is essentially a tempo based delay effect. However, the primary feature that distinguishes Replicant from other delays is the notion of beat triggers. Replicant divides the signal into slices and these slices are then repeated for a certain amount of time, in addition to how many times they will be repeated. So basically the difference between replicant and other delay effects is that a standard delay loops and repeats all of the audio that passes through it, and replicant only repeats certain segments and slices. That's the gist of this plugin in case you're not familiar with it. Okay, so now let's have a closer and quick look at the user interface and controls this one offers. I don't want to dive deep into the details of every control, I prefer to briefly mention what a control does and at the end listen to examples and figure out auditorily what it sounds like. First, the waveform display. The unprocessed signal is in the light blue color and the processed signal is in light greenish color. Underneath the display there is a trigger sequencer and the trigger sequencer will represent a number of slices within a measure. If activated, replicant will be triggered at that slice and turning it off will make it pass with no processing. You can set how many slices within a measure from the size knob in here. The likelihood knobs control the probability the replicant will begin repeating the audio at a given slice. The selected knob determines the likelihood that replicant will repeat slices whose trigger switches are on. If the knob is set at 100%, there will always be repetitions at the positions whose trigger switches are on. If the knob is set to 50%, half of the slices chosen with the trigger switches will repeat. The random knob determines how likely that any of the slices in a measure would be selected for repetition, regardless of whether their trigger switches are on or off. So all of the slices within the measure are viable to be repeated and delayed. For the replicator, these controls determine the length of the audio segments that will be repeated and how many times they will be repeated. The RAND knob here introduces variations from the set segment length, and it could be turned off by keeping it fully anti-clockwise. And similarly, the RAND knob here causes replicant to randomly vary the number of times it repeats. As the knob's turned up, the number of times that replicant repeats any segment of audio will become more unpredictable, but won't play any segment more than 16 times. The ignore switch also affects how it chooses slices for repetition. It either ignores new segments for repetition or picks up the new segments to repeat them. Different delay modes are available as well such as dotted, triplet, etc.
scatter button and ran Coe's replicant to play repeated slices backwards, which is very interesting if it's done correctly. Then we have slice effects and event effects. For the slice effects, we have stutter, which is comprised of length, pitch, and division. These controls further subdivide the slices of audio chosen by the selector and repeater earlier, and this allows you to add different sonic features that were not really available in the original signal. The second slice effect is a tempo sync delay. Its controls should be self-explanatory, just like any other delay effect. Then we have the Reduct. It applies sample rate and bit depth reduction. The Samples knob will reduce the sample rate of the audio, creating aliasing artifacts. And the Bits knob controls the bit depth for the looped audio. And for the ring modulation, it controls audio rate amplitude modulation. It works by multiplying the incoming signal with a signal from a fixed audio oscillator. The frequency knob controls the frequency of that fixed oscillator. And the amount knob increases the intensity of ring modulation effect. After setting all of the slice effects, the effector knobs in the center of Rubdekin determine how likely it is that any of the individual slice effects are applied to each audio signal. At 0%, the corresponding slice effect never happens and at 100%, the effect will be heard on each slice. If it's set somewhere in between, the effect may or may not happen on each slice. So higher values mean it's more likely to happen. The events effects are position, which sets the initial stereo placement of the looped audio. The speed knob controls the speed at which the auto banner moves the looped audio. This is similar to an LFO envelope. The width knob adjusts the amount of panning, and if set to zero, the auto banner has no effect. The wrap button could create some sort of a ping pong stereo delay effect. Next, we have an envelope generator. And this envelope enables Replicant to be used on a wider variety of sustained sounds, such as pads. Pretty standard, but an awesome addition. There are two filters, high pass filter and a low pass filter. The filters can alter the timbre of the looped audio. Lastly, the output controls. There is a level and decay. Decay could be used to have Replicant as a more traditional delay effect, as the looped audio becomes quieter each time it repeats. There are also different mixing modes. The mix mode mixes the input signal with the output signal in equal amounts. You can hear both original and process signals with this one. The dock mode will dock the dry signal and play the process audio only, and the send mode only plays the processed audio. I use it on this sound as a send effect and not an insert on the channel directly, so I can have more control over the wet dry signal balance and automate all of it freely without losing the primary character of the sound that I started with. Sounds cool and mainly on percussions, but I have to say that the presets overall are a big letdown for me. I tried all of them mainly on different loops and not many presets are that good. 
I know that surely these presets are not always to be used as is, but what I meant is they just didn't really inspire me that much. I also browsed a lot from them in the overview section while I was going over the controls, so feel free to go back and listen again if you want. So overall, I think Replicant is such a powerful tool, and um, I'll still have more fun experimenting with it actually, and I tried it on drums, I tried it on synth, it's ideal on percussive music genres. It just needed more inspiring presets that are good for different scenarios, but other than that, it's really good. And this brings us to the end of this video, I hope you found it helpful. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe for future content. Thank you for watching.